Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone here for joining us at uh, the um, webinar for the National Salary Survey to release the 2018 results. And um, I've got with me Charles Go. We'll introduce ourselves very shortly. But um, thank you very much for joining us uh, today. Um, of course, the National Salary Survey is more than just a salary benchmarking tool. Um, it also offers a number of reports throughout the year on staff retention, uh, the gender pay gap, um, and other key HR policies and trends that are happening in the market. So, um, so Charles, should we get into it? Yeah, let's do it. We should, okay. So just to introduce ourselves, so my name's Sam Bell. I'm the General Manager of Corporate Services and Research here at the Institute. I'm joined by Charles Go, who is the Research Product Manager, um, and he heads up our National Salary Survey team. Welcome, Charles. Thanks, Sam. Um, just a little bit of information about the National Salary Survey itself. Um, this is the first year we've launched um, under our new brand, the Institute of Managers and Leaders, and we're absolutely delighted to. For 53 years, it launched under the Australian Institute of Management, um, and the Institute rebranded from the Australian Institute of Management to the Institute of Managers and Leaders um, in June last year. Um, so, of course, this is the first year we've, we've uh, released um, all the results under our new banner, um, and we're absolutely delighted to. Um, for those that don't know, the reason behind uh, the rebrand is that the Australian Institute of Management now is an RTO business, solely training and education, um, and the Institute of Managers and Leaders um, now focuses on the professional and corporate membership business, uh, the people analytics and management diagnostic tools unit. Um, also, um, we support uh, corporates with consulting services in management and leadership. And of course, we run the Chartered Management Program, Chartered Manager Program, sorry, for Australia and New Zealand. Um, in addition to that, we also have the National Salary Survey under the Institute of Managers and Leaders brand, which as I said, we're delighted to um, to launch this year um, for uh, the 54th year, I think, Charles. And you might cover off on some of those some of those stats of um, what the National Salary Survey is all about. Sure thing. Thanks, Sam. So, like Sam said, the institute has been producing this salary survey for a number of years now, for actually, for more than 50 years now. We've been providing organisations with um, high quality remuneration and and salary benchmarking data. Um, which is which is really good for attracting and retaining staff. Now the the survey that we run, we conduct it and um, we or, we survey about hundreds of organisations Australia wide, and that gives us data that represents about twenty five more than twenty five thousand employees Australia wide, which is really good. As you as you know, the more data you have, the more robust the the, the sample is and the better the data is. Um, the salary survey has 250 position titles that you can choose from, um, and that covers um, job areas or job, what we call job families, like marketing and sales, general management, finance and accounting, um, even even down to engineering and science positions, which is, which is a, a great spread. Now, it's not just about salaries. So you also get um, HR policies and benefits data as well, so you can um, use that to, to properly create a really attractive and engaging um, remuneration and policy um, um, document within your organizations that you, can, that you can use. Now, the salary survey is available on in a hard copy in an online database. In fact, you get a, the hard copy right here for those people who would like prefer, um, you know, having something seen, sitting on your desk. It's a pretty heavy document here, so it's really good for propping up tables, um, <laughs> propping up doors. But uh, if you're really if you're really serious about attracting and retaining staff retention, you might want to open it up and see what's in there. Now, the online database um, and the hard copy, we do release it every year in April, at the end of April. And then we also update the online database in October. So that's really twice a year that you're going to get really great data, um, salary data for, for salary benchmarking that you can use the, um, whenever you need to, really. Now, the additional insights that Sam has mentioned was the staff retention report and the gender pay report. These are two extra reports that we put, we give the salary survey purchasers throughout the year um, at free of cost. Now, what we do is that we take the salary data already that, that's in the report and we just drill it down even further. So for the staff retention, for example, we have a turnover rate within the, the survey, but then we break it down in staff retention report by um, location, industry, company size, so you can actually use that to, to pinpoint and, and see whether your turnover rate is um, 
is good or bad, depending on where you're at. Now, throughout the year, we also have a newsletter that we send out to, um, every two months, and that will have great articles and great content that, um, that fits the remuneration and HR space. And also, finally, we have a remuneration consulting service. So for those organizations that have really hybrid roles or really niche roles that you don't find in, in typical salary survey um, tools, we, we do have a REM consultant who we work with who can help you out with that um, and find the, what the right salary range is for, for that particular position. Thanks, Charles. Um, very um, in-depth um, discussion on what the salary survey is. One of the great things that I think um, the National Salary Survey offers is that most of our contributors come from small and medium-sized businesses. So those are those businesses from 20 to 300 staff. Um, so it's, the results aren't skewed by large corporations or large companies. They're certainly designed and targeted at, at uh, the, that medium-sized business. And we believe, you know, certainly providing um, accurate market data for that segment of the economy, which makes up the vast majority of the economy, um, really vitally important. So, um, you know, it's always pleasing to talk to those those companies um, that are, you know, on the and, and their employees on the ground um, with those medium-sized organisations. So, so let's get into it. Um, and of course, we're not going to um, we're not going to tell you um, everything here today, but we do <laughs> want to cover off on some of the key things, key drivers we believe within the Australian labour market. Um, that um, are really driving, um, obviously, trends in the market and, and dictating, you know, what HR professionals um, need to do um, to, to, I guess, adjust um, to the changing circumstances. So where are we now? So the current state of play, um, our unemployment rate over 10 years, you can see it obviously peaked there in, in 2015 at 6.2. Um, we've come back now slightly to, to 5.6 from uh, 2017 to 2018, um, so a slight decrease. Um, there's still, ex what this tells us is there's still excess capacity um, in the labour market. Um, I know that economies around the world are not seeing significant salary growth until they get to about 5% unemployment rate, um, which um, traditionally is a very low uh, unemployment rate, but these days they call that probably um, full employment, 5%. So um, there's still excess capacity in the labour market, which is meaning there's not a huge pressure on salaries to increase, um, unfortunately, um, for, for everyone um, on the webinar. Um, but um, uh, but certainly, you know, historical standards, the unemployment rate is still um, very, very low. And uh, I know uh, Treasury forecasts forecast unemployment to fall to 5.25% um, over the next um, 12 months. Um, so um, if that translates, um, then certainly we will see upward pressure, continued upward pressure on salaries as a tightening of the labour market um, happens, and and the you know the, the expectation to pay more for talent um, is is required of business. So um, so unemployment at 5.6%, and as I said, there's still excess capacity in the labour market. Um, one of the really interesting statistics that came out of um, uh, both the things that we look at from the NSS perspective is full-time versus part-time. Um, there's always been this notion that the economy is changing, and I know Charles and I did this webinar last year, and we we talked a lot about the casualisation in the workforce and the effect that that was having um, within the economy. We've actually seen a really interesting trend happen over the last 12 months, and that's that full-time numbers have, um, have increased significantly higher than part-time, which is almost a reversal of the trend that we saw last year and that perhaps the casualisation of the workforce, whilst it is happening over time, there's still a significant increase in, in uh, employers bringing on permanent full-time staff. Um, that's both a, a very promising sign for the economy and the labour market um, that, uh, that, in, that businesses feel confident enough to bring on full-time permanent staff. Um, and also, as I said, a reversal in the trend of what we've seen, you know, over the last uh, certainly 12 to 18 months from the National Salary Survey data. Um, if we now, and this is obviously represented in the next slide, which um, it, um, there you go, is is the um, is the is the number of organisations looking at uh, raising or have raised their permanent staffing levels. So from 2017, which was a low point of 35.8%. Um, this year, from this year's statistics, we have seen that jump to 51%, which is more in line with where it was um, in 2014. Um, 
and 2013. So it's, it has bounced back, which is great. But, you know, this time, sitting here this time last year, we were thinking this figure was going to continue to fall. Um, but it's a, as I said, it's a promising sign that employers feel confident enough um, to bring on more permanent full-time staff. Um, so um, we thought that was an interesting stat to touch on um, in, in light of where unemployment is and and um, and where staff uh, growth levels uh, employment levels are so let's talk about salaries um, so what is the NSS uh, seen um, for 2018 we have seen an uptick for the first time in six years um, this is um, obviously uh, a, probably not so much a shock to us we, we certainly thought that we 2017 was almost the trough um, of salaries um, but, uh, and we certainly expected um, it uh, to flatline, but um, an increase is always, you know, very promising. And so up to 2.9% um, on, on our data, which is, which is very promising, a long way off the, um, the glory days of 2012, 13, up around 4%. Um, and inflation has also um, continued to flatline around that 2%, which is at the bottom end of the Reserve Bank um, target range. Um, so what that means is, you know, in real terms, yes, we are moving forward, but not not moving forward that much, um, given that salary growth is still reasonably low. Um, and uh, when we talk about inflation at 2%, uh, that might be on some goods, such as the things you buy at the, the supermarket, but certainly the key areas like health, education, um, are certainly moving up a lot higher than 2% per year. Uh, um, so um, so that's, e that's putting even further pressure with, with a low salary growth, even further pressure on household budgets um, to continue to, to really um, find a squeeze between inflation and salary growth. Um, so as we talk about salaries, um, from an overall context of moving upwards, um, we wanted to look at um, the highest and the lowest sectors um, from what the National Salary Survey saw in 2018. Um, the highest for um, the first time in some time was uh, business and professional services, um, coming in at just under 4% growth for the year. Now, this marks an 18% um, nominal increase on um, what business and professional services were last year, um, which, um, which, is a, which is a large increase um, for this sector. Um, and we probably will touch on business, business and professional services a bit later um, in the piece, but Certainly, whilst their salaries are increasing significantly, what we are seeing, Charles, as much as anything, um, is a is also a high staff turnover in that industry. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so which which tends to lend itself to a an industry performing very strongly. Um, staff are um, leaving to move to other firms typically um, for higher salaries. Um, so, a lot of competition in that space. On the flip side, um, at the lowest sector we're seeing is construction and engineering coming in at just under two and a half percent, which um, is extremely low um, for for that sector. Um, and um, and you know, really a disappointing result. I, I would have thought, given um, the amount of you know, construction work going on and the all the talk about infrastructure spend, um, particularly um, the investment superannuation funds are making, um, and also the public sector. Um, you're always hearing state and federal governments um, crowing about how much money they're putting into infrastructure and um, perhaps we're not really seeing that translate into on the ground jobs and certainly not a lot of pr upside pressure um, in, um, in the employment environment for construction engineering. So um, it came in as the lowest um, growth sector, um, which obviously disappointing if, uh, if you're associated with that industry. Um, but. Um, we thought we'd have a look at states as well, um, and uh, and salary increases by states. Um, you can see that um, that Queenslanders are, are still um, struggling to see that increase. Um, obviously, a um, very diverse economy um, built around tourism, agriculture, mining, um, and then and then obviously um, a, a lot of other you know uh, offshoot financial services, particularly from Sydney and Melbourne within the Brisbane. Um, and southeast Queensland um, area in particular, but only 2.7% we've seen um, for the 12 months. We will look at forecasts shortly, um, which um, also uncovers some interesting stats, but certainly Victoria moving well, as, as is, I think, New South Wales is fairly flat. 
Um, South Australia and the Northern Territory has increased um, and Western Australia has stayed flat. So, um, so um, from a state perspective, Charles, um, I think um, without Queensland's result, I think everything seems fairly um, flat across the surface, except yeah. for probably Victoria and Tasmania, which yeah. has seen the larger increase. That's correct. Um, if we move along to um, forecasts, and I know we this is probably the biggest question we get, um, when, and Charles and his team um, <laughs> gets, and I should I should actually at this point say, um, you know that I know that I'm not sure if the team is listening in, but they do a terrific job um, you, in sir. in bringing all this together, and um, uh, you know it's a, it's a, as I said, 25,000 employees, so it's a huge job to bring all this data together. I know I think Eka's listening in and once again he's he's an administrator for all this and he does a superb job as as does um, the rest of the team um, so forecasts are obviously always what um, is on the, the the questions of of people ringing in oh what you know what what is what's going to happen um, one of the interesting stats is that it seems like the senior executives senior managers and other managers are all paying themselves <laughs> a lot more they're they're a forecast we're forecasting um, significant salary increases at management levels, um, whereas professional and technical and salaried staff are staying fairly flat. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the dream, right? To climb the corporate ladder, that's get up the there. Dream to yeah. climb the corporate ladder. So what we're seeing is that, um, yeah, senior executive management roles are forecast to increase um, significantly higher than salaried staff um, and professional and technical staff, um, which um, we also thought was a, a very interesting um, way of looking at it, and of course, we don't want to upset too many, you know, salaried staff on the webinar. Um, but um, you can always go and ask your uh, managers and senior managers, um, yeah, how much they're getting paid, <laughs> and and ask them that. But yeah, it was an interesting statistic that we saw significant growth in that management area. Um, what are the so we just talked about industries um, and what they've done over the last twelve months. Looking ahead, business and professional services is the highest um, forecast industry for salary growth, um, moving above 4% there, or right on 4%. Um, and um, and you know, we've ha I've had a lot of people ring up and ask us questions about, well, certainly um, purchases of the survey and companies who, who contribute data uh, to us have asked us why that reason is. And um, there's certainly a large increase in, um, in private sector and public sector in particular um, demand on professional and business services. Um, we're certainly seeing those sorts of organisations uh, perform very, very well. Um, there is a, um, um, and, and so we believe that demand is pushing up um, salaries in the space. We also believe that talent is scarce in that space, um, or good talent is scarce. So businesses are prepared to pay higher um, for people to come across and join their firm. Um, and um, and so um, a it's a it's a probably a, a real outlier that level of growth um, in the economy um, four percent growth which is which is very significant um, and obviously if you are in that space um, very encouraging um, for the next twelve months ahead um, on the flip side um, the four largest forecast decline we're seeing is retail and. Um, and retail's falling from 3.06% to 2.62% um, for the next 12 months forecast-wise. And um, and I think that's certainly a sign of um, a tightening within the retail environment. Um, certainly um, the rise of you know, the online shopping, more and more online shopping, um, retail employees and space around the city, um, you, you're certainly seeing a um, our demand and perhaps if we all followed Frank Lowy's uh, logic and uh, got out of shopping centres, um, perhaps <laughs> we follow Mr Lowy um, in that space because certainly uh, yeah, retail workers, um, uh, you know, there's certainly not that demand in pushing up uh, salaries in the retail industry. So uh, that's where we're seeing certainly a decline for the forecasted 12 months ahead. Uh, if we move along to state-based salary increases and we had a look at this and there was terrible news for Queensland um, for the preceding 12 months but looking ahead it's even worse Charles. Um, Queensland um, uh, as, a, as an average is 17% lower than, um, than uh, Victoria and Tasmania um, on a nominal basis and um, um, 
it's a significant gap, uh, half a percent there, 2.5 to 3 percent. Um, New South Wales is forecast to be fairly flat at 2.8. Um, South Australia and the Northern Territory um, coming off a little bit at 2.6 and WA also coming off at 2.6 and perhaps that is an indication, particularly in WA where we saw some very, very strong salary data during the um, the mining boom or certainly the, the um, infrastructure boom over there in mining investment um, where salary growth was running at 35 to 4% in WA now coming off. Um, and that's probably representative that 2.6% of the um, non-mining um, investment. Um, so 2.6 in WA where it's coming off about 0.4%. So, um, so we are seeing some salaries pull back, but certainly New South Wales and Victoria probably remaining the strongest economies um, across the country. So what does all this mean? I did write an article recently about, you know, wh where should we, what does, the, what does the data, all this data that Charles and his team um, collates and as the, as the Institute has been, you know, pulling together for the last 54 years, um, what can we read out of the 2018? I thought this was just a bit of a lighter slide, but um, <laughs> if anyone did want to follow the money, um, we, we thought um, certainly get a, a job in management, uh, move to Victoria, um, join a professional services firm and make sure you perform at your job. Um, because all the signs are if uh, you can pull all those uh, four, um, four uh, um, areas off, then certainly uh, you, will, um, you will achieve very, very well um, in the next 12 months. But uh, we thought that was a bit of a lighter side, but certainly those are the, the, um, the key areas. Professional services moving forward. Victoria, um, the strongest uh, state um, uh, from a salary growth perspective, and we're seeing larger increases at a management level um, than certainly salaried staff. So, um, and and obviously that final one, make sure you perform at your roles, and um, obviously that's <laughs> always critical. By the way, Sam, I'm moving to Victoria next week. So oh, okay, I just, uh, oh, just so want to let you know that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we talked a little bit <clears throat> earlier about. Um, uh, staff turnover um, and what you receive as a national salary survey uh, contributor and purchaser um, that um, you receive a, a report. And Charles, when do we release the, the staff retention report? That's released around along with the October update. So around late September, early October is when we'll release the October update and the staff retention report at the same time. Okay. So um, the staff retention re report is is absolutely <laughs> critical and we always get fantastic information out of this report because it tells a real story about, you know, what are the HR trends and policies in the market and how are organisations retaining their quality or attracting and retaining their quality staff. Um, there's always some terrific insights um, from organisations um, right around Australia about this and and I always look forward to October and I actually think we did an, a, a webinar, did we, in October on the, yes, when that was did. released sure and we did. talked a bit about it. but. Yeah. Um, we do also look at the data um, for the for the April release, which is what we're talking about here today, the April collation of data, um, and um, and we thought we'd include some of this information in today's webinar because it is very helpful. One of the things we are seeing is that um, staff turnover is declining in Australia, which is a good sign for organisation, 14.3%, um, and once again, when the economy was really booming, um, you know, 2012, 2013, as we saw salary growth was at 4%, a lot higher than where it is today, turnover was at 16.6%. So if people were feeling more confident leaving their employer um, and moving um, to another employer um, uh, with, a, with a stronger economy. We saw that sort of uh, um, dipping a little bit and we've seen it dip even further in 2018. So 14.3%, as you can see uh, on the chart, um, for 2018. What we thought was a really interesting statistic to this was that resignation rates have actually, so voluntary resignation rates have actually increased, um, where we've seen that decline as well um, in line with the staff turnover. So what that means is that whilst resignation rates, um, uh, uh, well, sorry, while staff turnover is falling, um, resignation rates are increasing. So that tells me that less people are um, uh, I, I guess being made redundant or you know being pushed out of their roles um, and more people are choosing to voluntarily resign and move to a, another role. 
Um, we thought that was it was bucking the trend of what has happened previously. As you can see, the trend line um, has typically um, uh, resignation rate and turnover has typically followed each other, but this year we've seen um, that that increase. And so, as I said, um, I think this is once again a, a sign of a, a stronger economy. Um, people are feeling more confident that they resign and move to another role. Um, and um, and companies are also, um, and I guess, making less redundancies um, and moving and making less people move out of their roles. Um, so what what we believe um, the closing of this gap means is that it's a sign of a certainly a strengthening economy. Um, people are feeling more secure in their roles and certainly um, more secure to leave their role for another role at a different organisation. Um, so um, a really interesting statistic um, from a staff turnover uh, perspective about the state of the Australian economy. Um, I, I also might quickly um, just touch on before I talk about this slide, we can, we can leave it on this slide, but just before we go, um, what are the top three reasons for staff turnover? Um, um, the highest was they are going to a similar role at another organisation. Another really interesting statistic where people are not leaving their industry or they're um, not going to, you know, a, a, you know, a completely um, different sort of sea change type environment. They are going to a similar role at another organisation. So, um, you know, that tells me once again in, in supporting um, the closing of the gap of the um, resignation rates is that people are feeling more confident in resigning their role and going to a similar job at another organisation. Um, and I think that sort of relates back to some of the stuff we talked about professional and business services in particular, um, because um, a lot of people are perhaps leaving uh, Deloitte and going to PwC on a higher salary, not to not to, to talk out um, of organisations, <laughs> but certainly that's what we are seeing, um, all people leaving that their similar role and going to um, to another organisation. Um, the, the second one was a, a, a um, was and, and significantly lower percentage were looking at new roles or new industries. Um, and um, and the last one was was obviously salary based was was moving um, to another industry for salaries. Um, so um, a, a very interesting statistic and something that always comes up, Charles, uh, with us is that um, is that um, we, we tell people, you know, it's really, really important um, and certainly HR people as well. It's really important to understand what the market is doing from a staff retention perspective, because the cost of um, losing a staff member, as we calculate in the NSS, is over $22,000 per person. So it's a significant price. That includes um, the offboarding of someone, the onboarding, um, the recruitment, the training, and bringing them up to speed. Generally, costs an organisation $22,000 for every person they lose. Um, so it's a huge cost to a business to be losing quality staff. So whatever you can do, you want to hold on and retain your your good your good talent inside your organisation. Um, because it's a significant price to pay. And actually, every time I use that 22,000 figure at conferences and meetings and things like that, people say, Sam, it's a lot higher than that. It's a lot <laughs> higher than 22,000, I can tell you, to, to, to upskill employees and, tr and, and train them in the role up to where, you know, you've lost a, a really good talent. So um, That's right. The, the statistic that we use is, is basically, we the question that we ask is simply about, um, I guess, the, the things that you can count on, on, on paper, they, yeah. like you said, recruitment, offboarding, training, but then the things that you don't really account for, you can't really account for is in that is, is also the, the loss of, of knowledge, the loss of company knowledge, um, people taking their, their clients with them and those contacts, those, those valuable contacts that they have yeah. taken with their, to another organization, possibly a competitor as well. And then you're also losing that business. Um, and there's also the, the indication of, of when people leave, then the staff morale tend to be slightly lower as well, because then, they tend to have, uh, you know, uh, I guess it, there's an anxiety for those people who are left in the organization um, in terms of who's taking over the work and also it, the business that goes out the door with, with that particular person as well. Um, and also I'd like to point out that usually the people who do leave are, are for, for, the, for, for higher staff, or I mean, for higher remuneration in, at the competitor organization are those that are the, the more talented employees that they know their worth and they've already been looking around and that's why they're probably have looked for the last 12 months and that's why they've prepared them themselves and, and left the organization. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I guess that underpins the value in having market data exactly. um, and an awareness of that. 
Um, so let's move on to this slide. Um, is your talent leaving? So staff turnover by industry. Um, where we're seeing a really high turnover is the IT industry. And look, that's not uncommon. We, we do typically see a higher uh, um, turnover in the IT area. Um, perhaps that is an uh, example of, a re, you know, there is a lot of casualization going on in that IT space um, where people are, you know, almost working for themselves a lot of the time yeah. um, and contracting out. Um, and IT companies tend to, to come in and out of favour. Um, every IT company that, that you know, I've worked with uh, across the space tends to, you know, it's, it's a sort of a love-hate relationship because when <laughs> IT goes wrong, everything goes wrong. So, um, but certainly a higher turnover, almost 14%, um, which is high. We talked about business professional services, you know, as I said, the highest salary growth um, in the economy, in the Australian economy right now, which also lends itself when there's high salary growth, um, also lends itself to high turnover because people are chasing the higher salaries um, and moving to competitor firms. Um, and interestingly enough, the banks, um, the financial services and insurance industry, where it's 13, banks, financial services and insurance is always a high turnover mm -hmm. rate. Um, perhaps once again, um, you know, a lot, a lot of those organisations um, in the economy, um, a lot of people moving to competitor um, organisations, um, but uh, certainly higher than what we have seen in the past at 13.1%. I'm not sure if the, the Royal Commission has had something to do with that, Charles, but um, actually this this data might have been taken just before all the um, really bad news about some of the things have taken place, but um, but certainly um, at 13% higher than what we expected. Um, the lower industries for, um, for talent leaving, um, agriculture, we always see this in the lower area. Um, I think People who work in agriculture, you know, forestry, fisheries, um, and farming, love their job. Yeah. Um, it's Take a pride. Well, it's it's probably a it's a lifestyle um, yep. and a career, and we always see that in the lowest um, changeovers. Uh, manufacturing, which is interesting, uh, six point six. But I think this is probably a representation that perhaps the the manufacturing sector. We haven't we haven't talked a lot about manufacturing, but it's it's it in terms of salary growth, it features sort of down the lower end of the category as well. Um, and um, perhaps there's not a lot of options um, mm. to, to move out of manufacturing and into other roles. Um, and uh, any movements typically, you know, I think probably forced in today's economy. Mm -hmm. um, those roles are, are, are very, very, um, it's difficult to leave that industry and certainly mining, probably an example of where we are at in the mining um, phase is that a lot of the investment is has been done. Um, and um, and that employment levels in mining are, are fairly steady. Um, so they so features and interesting enough, when mining was at its peak, mining was was in that um, was closer to that top box of the highest turnover. Um, so it's interesting how in cycles um, industries move from highest turnover to lowest turnover depending on where they are in the cycle. But obviously mining being in the lowest area there. Um, certainly representative of, of you know where we are in the, the mining investment cycle um, and um, yeah so some interesting stats um, so what can you do um, and uh, we really wanted to talk about um, this from from the context of from an organization and from an individual perspective um, what can you do um, in terms of um, um, understanding where we are um, attracting and retaining great quality talent to your organisation or um, if you are um, great talent yourself and looking for new roles and new opportunities, you know, where can you go and what can you do? Um, we picked out three key things and um, these are, these obviously have come up in the National Salary Survey significantly from, you know, from our contributors and our respondents. Um, but um, good management, invest in good management and leadership and good managers you know, as we know, have a huge effect on organisations. Every time I go around and I speak to um, to organisations, particularly as part of our consulting work with with our corporate membership, um, is that you know they say you know people say yeah I remember working for a great manager, I remember working for a great leader, or I remember working for a terrible manager, and all I wanted to do was get out. I was looking at seek half the time um, and trying to get you know looking for the exit door. So um, we we find it really really important to work on the professional development of your managers and leaders. It has a huge effect on people, culture, innovation and performance of the organisation. 
Um, just some quick stats. PwC, who I, I did mention earlier, PwC, um, uh, some of their latest research showed 71% of Australia's CEOs believe leadership is the number one skill to have for their staff. So it's very, very interesting from an HR perspective and sort of, and also from an individual perspective about your own capability. So 91% of CEOs want leadership um, skills in their teams. 75% of employees believe that Australian workplaces need better managers and leaders. And only one in four HR professionals rate the quality of their leaders as high. So what does that tell us? We need more investment in the development of good management and leadership as from, from you personally, and also from an organisation perspective. Um, the second part is invest in L&D. So um, a really, actually, we haven't touched on it, but a really disappointing statistic, Charles, from 2017 to 18 was that we've seen a decline in, in professional development budgets. Um, so just a small decline, Sam. Um, oh, was I it? Think, yes, yes. I think it's, um, uh, I think it was sitting around 187. Oh, hang on. No, it was the number of, it was the number of organisations that, that had a training, that, that had a formal training, training policy. That had a formal training policy, That's went right, from yeah. about 60% to about 50. I think so, yeah. 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 So we, we've seen a, a decline in companies having a formal budget for professional development from about 60 to 50. Um, and whilst, yeah, as Charles said, I think the budget's fairly, it's slightly lower, but not yeah. too bad. Um, but we, we really, um, when we speak to organisations, certainly from a consulting perspective for our corporate members, is that we talk about um, offering some development activities for their staff. Um, interesting statistic out of the University of Melbourne that I picked up, $9 out of every 10 um, in the management and leadership development space is spent on senior managers and leaders. And um, um, we talked about wage rises for senior executives and management people. Well, they also get most of the spend, 90% <laughs> um, of the spend of um, the training and education budget as well. So what that tells me is $1, one out of every $10 um, um, spent on management leadership is actually spent on middle managers. Mm -hmm. actually spe spent on the development of the people who are talking to the clients mm -hmm. and the people on the ground who you know can um, have a huge impact on um, creating better efficiencies in your business and also productivity on the ground so what, what I would say is that more than one out of every ten dollars needs to go to junior and middle managers to develop those people and if you're doing that you're, you're going to attract and retain better quality staff they are going to hang around if they believe that you're willing to invest in them and to, if you're willing to, to support them and back them in their in their careers. So uh, we, we certainly come from the perspective of, um, of more focus needs to be put on those junior and middle managers to really raise their development um, and their management and leadership capability um, so that they, you know, they, they do feel supported and they will contribute more to your organisation. Um, the last one, and we have talked a little bit about this earlier, but market data is obviously vital for decision making in business. Um, and um, we, we obviously don't want to talk about, you know, what we offer all the time, but there's certainly market data out there, um, both from the National Salary Survey, from other services that we offer organisations, but also um, more broadly, there is a lot of market data um, on HR trends and, and, and policies. And, um, and we certainly believe that having access to quality data will, um, will certainly help you, your organisation attract and retain quality people. Um, and Charles, have you got anything to add on that? I mean, we do know that it costs, we've talked about the 22,000 figure and the fact yeah. that, um, you know, it's certainly to lose people is, is a, a massive hit to an organisation. It is, it is. Um, no, we've got nothing to add to that. Yep. Uh... So now this is where, well, I guess you've got nothing to add to that, but this is where Charles comes <laughs> to his, uh, his fore because we are going to actually open up um, what the National Salary Survey looks like and yes. how we can best use it with a couple of scenarios. Um, and this is where Charles earns his money um, <laughs> because um, uh, we'll put him under the pump. So if we, Charles, if we have a look at um, the first scenario, so let's say we're looking, we're a, a, a mid-tier accounting firm, um, we're looking for an assistant accountant, we're located in Brisbane um, and, you know, we're, we're a turnover of 20 to $100 million organisation. Yep. Um, can you find me what the um, the lower quartile, upper quartile, and median salary we should pay for that assistant account? Of course, let's let's jump into it. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'll just log into the National Salary Survey website right now and just show you how easy it is to to go in there. So one second.
Great. So salary survey website is fairly easy to use. Um, at the at the top here, at by the home page is where you contribute your where organizations contribute data. Anyone can be a contributor, by the way. So for those who are interested in, in providing the salary data here, um, this is the this is the place to go. But I will jump in directly to the access data section. This is where we download the the raw the the, the report itself. So you can either download the entire report. Um, you can download the salary data by job families which are the job areas that we that we have, or you can find the individual positions themselves. So Sam, from your example, I think it was the assistant accountant position that we were looking for. So if I'm an HR person in the in that um, um, scenario, I would click on this here, assistant accountant. And this is the typical example, this is the, the, the format of, of all the positions. The, all 250 positions that we have, have have this exact format. So we start off with a role description and a position description. We break down, we, we have this overall salary data here. So as, I, as you can see, the total salary um, we've got here is, is essentially the base salary, but the number of cases, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and average. Now, um, the lower quartile and, and upper quartile, there are a, is a good range that you can use um, depending on whether the recruit, the, the person, the, the applicants are are experienced, highly experienced, or whether they they're the brand new and they need a bit of a bit more training. Then you can kind of play around with it, with that data there. Now, that summary table here is, is all for all 375 cases for this particular example. But what we do also is that um, we we break it down by annual turnover number of employees, location, and industry as well. So from, he, from here, we can find out that in Brisbane, for example, the metro yeah. metro would be 69,000. 868. Um, yep. And then from the number of uh, the annual turnover, we've got 67,377. Um, now, that's a, a pretty good, um, pretty close gap there. So you can, you know, the, the, the right next to each structure other. Structure remuneration package between those two. Exactly. Yeah. However, um, we can actually pinpoint the exact data where the, the two cross over, right? So we can say, jump into this. This is our handy little analyze data tool, which we've put in significant investment over the last 12 months. It, the tools always has always been there, actually, but um, we've, we've made it a lot easier to use and a lot faster as well. Um, so here, again, we'll, we'll look for this position in the um, in the finance in the accounting section, assistant accountant. I'm going to enter the salary data that we want to pay the employee. So let's say I'll put in the 67 that we saw. And I think it was 76 was there. Uh, the filter, now we want Queensland, was it? Metro, and then 20 to 100. And then away we go. Now, so uh, as you said, Charles, oh, so it drops straight into an Excel file there. That's right, yes. So as, uh, as Charles said, we, we've put in significant investment into this online platform, the search tool, um, to make it really, really easy for you to just pull out data straight away. Yeah, and, here's and the here we have the spreadsheet. So we've got the search criteria that we've, we've selected, the position here, the number of cases, and again, your total salary, total package figures in the lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and average figures. A handy little thing as well is that whatever data you entered here is as a salary you want to pay that is then compared to the market average and you find out exactly what the, the difference is so you can see easily see whether you're overpaying or underpaying the, your staff yep. um, and as you can see it, it's it came out into a, a spreadsheet really quickly so whoever is asking for this data within the, the organization key stakeholders other managers in the other departments you can easily send this through through to them and and, and plug this into a report that chances are they already have anyway yep. So just quickly, um, we've got one other scenario to run through, and yes. then we will, I know we're getting some questions through, and we want to have about sort of um, 10, at least 10 or 15 minutes for questions at the end. Right. So we'll have a look at this other um, scenario. Just a quick question that just came through, Charles. Sure. Is salary, um, is the salary estimation here inclusive of superannuation? The, um, no, so the total package, uh, actually the total salary figure is, is, is your, like your base salary, yep. right? Um, total package so is what, in, of, exclusive, yep. exactly. Okay. And total package is what includes superannuation and then also other benefits as well. So, um, uh, car package values, um, vehicle allowances, any general spending accounts, things like that are added in. The and that's all broken figures. down for you when you, when you do that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah, so that answers that question. But as I said, I encourage, I should have mentioned at the beginning, please ask some questions if you've got them and we will certainly have sort of 10 minutes at the end to run through it once we have a look at this second yes. scenario, Charles, which is an engineering manager okay. based in Melbourne and working in the construction industry. All right, let's have a look at that. So now we're going to go to engineering and science. Engineering manager is here. And again, I'm going to put in, oh, we'll leave out assistant accountant this time. Um, engineering manager. So it saves the roles that you're looking exactly. in there too. Oh, something I forgot to mention is exactly, exactly right. So whenever you click on, on these positions here and you choose, it actually comes up with a group box here and you can name that group to whatever you want to and save that, that group. And then when you come in, the next time you sign into the salary survey, it's actually saved up here. So you can create multiple groups. You can create um, individual persons as well, and it will always be there and you yeah. can fiddle around with the, with the and, filter. Later. And we know a number of organizations who purchase it um, create um, groups for their teams. Yes. So they can very, very quickly every quarter, just quickly um, click on update group or, or essentially get the latest results from when we're updating the data. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So if we look I'm at engineering manager. It. So I'm going to take a shot in the dark here because we didn't look, have a look at the data beforehand. So let's go, what do you think, Sam, 130? And let's go 140 for this. And that was, again, Melbourne and and it was in construction this time. Okay. So if we look at construction engineering, which was one of our sectors that was a bit down was down yeah. yeah it was the lowest growth sector for 2018 okay all right let's see if i was right so we've got victoria metro construction and engineering and i was very close very close 95 percent although a bit off on on the total package figure there yeah, but so the total package figures were 162,000. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So again, that would include superannuation and any other kind of benefits that, that that's included with the position. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's terrific, Charles. How easy is that? Very, very. That only took what? Yeah. Three, four minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and what? And so some of the the major improvements you've made to that online platform. So obviously, yes. it comes in the. You've got the big thick book there, oh, so you can, right here. Yeah. So that's got everything paper based, but that's with the online search things like that, what what's the key things that have been done there? Is it is it the the ability to be able to enter that data really quickly and save those? This is data? exactly so. So the the online tool, the analyzed data tool, is is really what we we've um, spent a lot of uh, time and, and effort on in the last um, twelve months, twelve two three years actually. Um, so we've we've made it a lot faster to 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 include. Yeah. To, to use a search tool um, or to the drill down tool. Um, we've also limited the the number of uh, positions that you can search in, in the, it, or drill down in the one time. We've actually made it easier to, to contribute as well now that you mentioned it. Yeah. Um, before the, the the survey itself was a little bit clunky. Um, it was a little bit uh, not that intuitive for, for brand new contributors, but we've, we've spent some significant um, resources on that, on that now. So it yeah. makes it a lot so easier and faster. Easy for contributors to contribute data. That's right. And easy for, you know, just standard purchases to be able to, to jump on. So exactly. Um, terrific. Thank you very much, Charles, for showing us that. That's fantastic. Um, so what have we got today? So the webinar special that we're, we're offering um, today um, for the National Salary Survey, um, for a limited time, so before Wednesday, the 6th yep. um, of June, we're offering 15% off on the National Salary Survey. Um, and that's to, to everyone you know, online here on the webinar. Um, so simply go to um, managersandleaders.com.au forward slash NSS um, and have a look. Um, and I encourage you, um, you know, even if you're not going to take up that, 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 um, that special, but certainly jump in there and have a look at the quality of what the National Salary Survey is, because it's, there's a lot of information. It's very thorough, um, and um, and certainly um, a lot of information, you know, more broadly about. So, and I think it links to the blog as well. But there's there's a blog on that website as well, which talks a lot about what you can do in terms of staff retention, attracting great quality talent to your organisation. So there's a huge amount of information that we offer um, around not only salary benchmarking but HR 
policies and trends as well in the market. So as I said, 15% off um, if you purchase before Wednesday the 6th. Please use the promo code WEB15. So WEB15. Um, we've also got a section on the website where you can enter your details and um, we'll call you back. Um, so um, if you've got any questions that we don't answer here right now or um, anything that you'd like to know further about the NSS before you purchase, just fill in your details there and um, Thomas or one of our team will um, be straight on the phone and they'll call you um, within the next 24 hours. So um, jump on that website, managersandleaders.com.au forward slash NSS and certainly have a look at what's on offer. Um, now, questions. We've got we've got 10 minutes or eight minutes. We've been doing a fair <laughs> bit of talking, Charles. So I'm hoping we get some questions and you can answer some. Oh, um, hopefully they'll stump me. Okay, so we've got one question here through. So would increasing salaries be enough to keep staff in my company? Is that is that the only thing we're offering is, is only salary increases enough to keep that's that's always a question that we, we get a lot. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that organizations are always trying to cut cut budgets and, and try and save money where they can, um, and and make sure that the profits are high. But uh, salaries and, and and other benefits and improving world, cu world culture and, and learning and development um, for the for the for the staff is is, is really important. Um, I think personally, I think. It's, Increasing salaries and keep making sure that you're paying your employees at the market rates or above the market rates are the bare minimum, right? So, when at the end of the day, employees are, are still your staff members, your talented staff members are, are still people. So they're still at the end of the day, they're they're going back home. They would like to talk to their their family about buying a new property, going on holidays, um, saving up for this and that. So salaries are still the, the thing that that's always front of mind. Um, when you get past that, though, however, you you then look at other things in, in the in the organization in in their work life, things like finding a new challenge, things like learning and development, career progression, um, a good a really good culture, um, really fantastic managers and leaders. So these mm -hmm. are the things that you also have to invest in um, to make sure that you're you're keeping your staff. So it's always a tricky question, I think. But like I said, I think salaries are, are the bare minimum. Um, and then you add on top of that as well. Okay, thanks, yeah. Charles. Um, does the, so, so some quick ones coming through. Does the survey include public sector data? Um, yes. So, so the organization, uh, the the salary survey, we we do have organizations that, that come from the public sector. However, we don't break it down by by that. So, as you can see from the salary report that we an example that we just went through, it's broken down by. Um, number of employees, uh, turnover rates, um, state. state and industry, um, but not the... Not public and private not, sector. Yeah, exactly, correct, yeah. Um, is it 15% off the contributor price or the normal price? Everything, actually. So, so if you're going to contribute, yes. it's 15% off the contributor price, and yes. if you're purchasing it just as a purchaser, it's 15% off the normal price, then, correct? correct, yep. yeah. Um, okay, how often is the salary data updated? So twice a year. So we release the salary survey, the main portion, the hard copy and online, the online data in April, but then we update the online data in October as well. So this, so the data we're talking about today and we've gone through is yeah. the April data. That's correct. And we, we will update that data in October. That's correct. Yeah, yes. at the October yeah. release. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else have we got here? If I purchase the data, does it cost additional for when consultants are needed due to hybrid role comparisons? Yes, that, that that is that is extra. Um, we like I said mentioned, we do have a Remen consultant we work with, um, and he's been with this business for a long, long time, hasn't he? Yes, uh, more than a decade now, I believe. Yeah, um, and yeah. Charles has almost been with the, the <laughs> institute for for a decade, and he's been and and he's been That's here correct. longer than that, hasn't he? That's correct. Our well, consultant. my ten years is uh, next year, and then the consultant has been here before, way before I started. So yeah. yes, yeah. So right. a long, long time, a lot of history yeah. in it, and. Um, he knows the tool. He, he's familiar with 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 the the salary survey and how we collect the data and how we to work with the data as well. Um, he uses a regression analysis to find out those little points where where the the, the salary survey might fall short in in case the positions are hybrid roles or, or just very niche yeah. that we don't have enough data for. So yeah, yeah. So if if you do want to utilize the services, I I, I suggest you jump um jump online and fill in your details for the callback and, and uh, Thomas or one of the team will give you a callback um, and um, be able to work that out um, with our consultant. 
Um, okay. Um, what else? Have, what else have we got? We've got three minutes. Um, last one. Uh, so what? What if I'm only after a handful of rolls? Do I need to purchase the whole thing? That's a good question. So no, you do not. So the for those smaller organizations or organizations who are relatively new to, to salary benchmarking and they just want to either purchase one or two positions just for what they need at the moment, um, you can purchase um, the individual positions or we actually have a package deal for, for, for five. If you want to purchase five roles, you can you can purchase that as well. So you don't really need the entire thing. Um, we highly encourage that, however, because you'll never know what you need further down yeah. the line. Um, you know, you might be looking at one position right now, one or two positions right now, but then down the line, you'll be hiring new staff. Um, other staff will be looking for their, their salary reviews and you'd want to make sure that you're, what you're giving them is, is the market rate. Yeah, and one of the reasons we brought that in is particularly a lot of smaller businesses mm -hmm. that didn't quite need the whole thing, but just had a small business and they just wanted to know that a select number of roles in their organisation, um, um, you know, they were doing the right thing by. So um, that's why we brought that that limited package in. What was it? Five roles. Is five it? roles. Five yeah, roles. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Um, okay. Do you provide a list of companies providing data? Unfortunately, not. So our our contributing organisations they would like to remain anonymous and and for for good reason. Um, so we don't provide the, the list of contributing companies. However, we do have a a survey profile um, document where we we actually list where they're coming from in terms of the company breakdowns like annual turnover, location, yep. industry, and company size. So you, you'll know whether you're, you know, you'll know where you you fit in in the in the salary. Yeah. On the yeah. flight this morning, I did look at that. Yeah. Uh, I think it was about 35% New South Wales. Yeah. 35% um, Victoria, 20% Queensland. So it's a fairly good spread yeah. from a population perspective um, of companies, um, and then South Australia and Western Australia. Um, as well um, within that, but a fairly good spread proportionately to population, I That's thought, correct. actually, when I was looking at it. And the spread um, also is is there in the company size as well, so annual turnover rates and, and also number of employees. It, it's a very good spread as well. And as we mentioned before, the the majority, a good, I think 22% comes from those who are between 50 to 100 staff members, and then a good 20, another 20% 20 is, is the I believe it's 100 to 200 staff members as well. So we're in that middle um, SME kind of Yeah, space. well, that's what, when we spoke about that earlier, that yeah. um, that medium size how many, is, and, and, and there was one, there was one um, question about uh, numbers of contributors, as we talked about, uh, generally medium sized businesses, um, the, the companies that um, are surveyed represent about 25,000 employees of their data. That's correct. So um, in, in the 2018 survey, there was 457 organizations, I believe that contributed. Um, and then they give a, a you know a range of, of of salary data, so it would it would all add up to about twenty five thousand employees. Done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think right. I think we've covered a number of quick questions. If you've got anything else, please go to managersandleaders.com.au forward slash nss. Um, as I said, we're offering fifteen percent off between now and Wednesday, um, both the contributor price and the normal price. So jump online um, and have a look at that. Also, if you've got any other questions, please put your details in there. Um, it's on the header of that page. Um, and uh, and Thomas or the team will call you back um, and answer all your questions. So thank you so much for your uh, participation today. Um, we've really enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, um, as I said, the National Salary Survey is something we're really proud of to launch again under the Institute of Managers and Leaders brand um, this year. And um, it's got some terrific information in there to support your organisation and, and yourself as a professional. Um, further your career and your organisation. So thank you very much for your participation and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you.